welcome to our show Health and Wellness Myths versus Facts. I'm Gargi Rawat. Endocrine glands produce and secrete hormones that are responsible for many important body functions. Now it plays a vital role in whether or not you develop diabetes, thyroid disease, growth disorders, sexual dysfunction and a host of other hormone related disorders. How often do you consider the health of your adrenals when you consider the state of your health? Now the sad fact is that the adrenal health is largely overlooked. The role of the adrenal glands in your body is to release certain hormones directly into the bloodstream. Many of these hormones have to do with how the body responds to stress and some are vital to existence. Adrenal health may not be at the top of your priority list when it comes to looking after your body. But if you do, don't take care of your adrenal glands, you may suffer from various conditions associated with it and we have an expert uh, panel to provide advice and tell us how uh, to help prevent the development of any kind of adrenal disorders as well as guide our viewers with effective long-term management strategies. We're joined by Dr. Sujoy Ghosh, Department of Endocrinology, IPGMER, Kolkata and uh, Dr. Varsha Jaktap, Director Jaktap Clinic and Research Center, Pune and Dr. Nantha Raman, Ramakrishnan, a consultant endocrinologist, Magna Centers for Obesity, Diabetes and endocrinology in Bengaluru. Thank you so much doctors uh, for joining us and you know to talk about this and help our viewers manage their health. And Dr. Ghosh, I'd like to start with you. Now we all have heard about the importance of the adrenal glands in the body and maybe some of us haven't heard about it but can you briefly explain what are the adrenal glands and what is their specific role in the functioning of the human body? Firstly, thank you very much for having me on the show. You know, uh, the adrenals are two endocrine organs which are situated just above the kidneys on either side. And it essentially has got two different bits. One is the cortex and the other is the medulla. These two bits produce two different kinds of hormones. The medulla produces certain hormones which help mesh, uh, keeping response to say something like a fright or a flight and maintaining blood pressure whereas the cortex has three layers which produces three different kinds of hormones the glucocorticoid hormones the mineral corticoid hormones and the sex steroids now the glucocorticoids are absolutely essential for an individual to be alive the mineral corticoid is predominantly responsible for maintaining blood pressure and the sodium balance and the sex steroids help in supplementing the other gonadal steroids produced either by the ovaries or the testes in the body. And all of these together are very important for normal bodily function of an individual. All right, uh, Dr. Uh, Jaktap, adrenal glands uh, produce adrenaline and how important is that for the body? Yeah, so Dr. Sujay was just now talking about uh, adrenal center, that is the medulla. So this medulla produces adrenaline. Adrenaline is a very important hormone. It plays a role in the fight or the flight response. So suppose now uh, you are uh, crossing a road and you see a vehicle approaching and you decide to run away or you know get back. Or suppose if you are going for a, a TV interview or an exam uh, and, uh, or a job interview and you are under a stress and then that time adrenaline, adrenaline comes into the picture. So adrenaline hormone increases the functioning of your heart. It helps the heart muscles to, to pump better. It makes uh, your lungs to breathe more efficiently. It maintains the blood pressure. And that is how by coming into picture at the right time and in a quick response, it helps you to deal with a stressful stimulus. So in the presence of a stress, you might you know, decide to either fight or flight. So this fight or flight response, adrenaline hormone plays a major role. All right, Dr. Ramakrishnan, now what happens when the adrenal glands don't function normally and what are some of the more common problems related to this? Uh, see, adrenal uh, uh, function can abnormality can refer to both either over function or under function. So if you do have uh, an under functioning thyroid gland, uh, which is the more common sort of dysfunction what we get. So uh, it refers to mainly glucocorticoid hypofunction. So with glucocorticoid hypofunction, we do have uh, uh, weakness, fatigue, loss of appetite, feeling of feverishness later on in the evening. So these are some of the common symptoms that a person with uh, adrenal glucocorticoid insufficiency can get. 
so you can have hyperfunction as well so hyperfunction is much less common but uh, hyperfunction is associated with weight gain uh, glucocorticoid hyperfunction so it's associated with weight gain especially over the waist the belly area and uh, you can have stretch marks in the belly just like how you'll get uh, stretch marks uh, when when someone is pregnant so and you can also have uh, thinning of muscles muscle wasting uh, osteoporosis or bone weakness fractures so these are some of the symptoms of uh, adrenal dysfunction of over function of the adrenal gland so there is also a new emerging entity called uh, hyperaldosteronism so which is being recognized more and more now it is a type of over function of the mineralocorticoid function of the adrenal gland so you can recognize uh, these patients they will just uh, present with uh, very high blood pressures which are difficult to manage and uh, this can be easily treated when recognized correctly all right and uh, dr ghosh so now that we've learned a bit about the adrenal gland and what they do how widespread are the problems related to it and are these uh, problems quite commonly found in indians is their prevalence uh, similar in men and women right uh the adrenal gland problems are pretty common and one of the things that we've got to remember is the adrenal glands are being controlled by two other systems one is the renin angiotensin system and the other is the pituitary gland which controls the adrenals so combined together whether it's a problem of the adrenal per se or the control system of the adrenals that we are talking about there is very commonly a problem in the final output of the adrenal glands and like uh, dr ramakrishnan was talking about is that you can have either an over functioning of the adrenal glands or you can have an under functioning of the adrenal glands or you can have tumors or atrophy of the adrenal glands and it's it's pretty common particularly the under functioning now in terms of gender bias of certain adrenal dysfunction some of these problems are more common in men and others are more common in women for example disorders where there is an excess of glucocorticoid steroid hormone production what is called cushing's syndrome that is more common in women whereas under functioning of the adrenal gland where there is less of glucocorticoid production is much more common in men and remember these problems of under functioning particularly do not necessarily have to be related to tumors but can be related to infections as well so diseases like tuberculosis can actually affect the adrenal glands fungal infections can affect the adrenal glands and therefore in tropical nations like india it's pretty common all right uh, dr jagtap what are some of the symptoms that can help alert a person that he or she has an adrenal gland problem and can these uh, problems be managed with regular medical treatment or does everyone need surgery to fix the problem right so the symptoms of uh, adrenal dysfunction uh, may be hypo or hyperfunctioning it is quite myriad and vague so uh, suppose for example if the adrenal gland is hyperfunctioning then that person can land up with high blood pressure high blood sugars uh, weakness in the muscles or bony fragility so like someone is suffering from a recurrent fracture then the problem could be somewhere lying actually in the adrenal gland uh sometimes patients can just have mood changes so you know irritability depression so all these could have been there for years together and the diagnosis has not yet been reached correctly and the adrenal disorders then get diagnosed late sometimes hypofunctioning of the adrenal gland can present with low blood sugar low blood pressure unexplained fatigue okay uh some of these uh, patients get diagnosed on a routine scan so a patient undergoes a abdominal sonography or a ct scan and then a, a adrenal a, you know tumor gets picked up so it's not necessary that all the patients have symptoms and when it comes to treatment of adrenal problems it is not necessary that all these patients require surgery some of them can be managed with medications alone uh some patients require long term med uh, medications for the rest of their life while some might require temporary medications some of these patients like say cushings can be managed with chemotherapy or radiation as well so the underlying cause actually decides the treatment all right uh, dr ramakrishnan uh, people can live without a thyroid gland if they take thyroid hormones uh, from outside and is this same for adrenal glands uh, can you live without the gland yes definitely i mean um 
prolonged survival is a norm even after removal of both the adrenal glands but the only thing a person needs to understand is that once they have developed adrenal uh, insufficiency which requires supplementation of uh, uh, these hormones basically glucocorticoids and or mineralocorticoid so these replacements have to be taken lifelong and uh, the patient needs to stick with the uh, the regime of uh, treatment and it has to be uh, uh, supervised periodically say maybe once in 6 months at least it has to be supervised by a endocrinologist apart from this uh, those uh, individuals who do not have uh, adrenal function uh, though they are on replacement and they do well most of the time there can be periods when they suddenly go into a crisis this is because the body can adjust its uh, production of uh, glucocorticoid or mineralocorticoid as per need uh, so it, it 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 determines what is the need of the body and then produces it accordingly but when you are giving a fixed dose of hormone we cannot uh, really achieve this so for instance someone has a emotional stress or a physical illness so they tend to develop a deficiency which will present with uh, sudden weakness vomiting uh, a, a, a very difficult to uh, recognize illness actually in these situations we have to increase the dose we usually give instructions for patients to adjust the dose themselves most of the time but there are situations when they may end up requiring hospitalization so it must be aware the the relatives should be aware that uh, they may require hospitalization uh, on occasions so when they are not well actually so which is much more often than in the general public who are not having adrenal dysfunction all right uh, dr ghosh how do you know if you have an adrenal gland tumor are all tumors of the adrenal gland cancerous right first of all fortunately adrenal tumors are not that commonly cancerous that's the good thing and uh, a majority of individuals who do have a swelling of the adrenal gland or adrenal tumor might actually be asymptomatic you might not know anything about the presence of such a tumor in that individual and often an individual will go for an imaging study of some sorts maybe an ultrasonography for some non specific symptoms which the patient might actually turn out to have a tumor or a ct scan or an mri that's one way of presentations when we call it adrenal incidentaloma which means incidentally detected adrenal lesions the other could be that the individual has signs and symptoms which are related to overproduction of some of the adrenal hormones that we talked about maybe over symptoms and signs of overproduction of the mineralocorticoid hormones which would lead to alterations in the electrolytes or it could be related to the corticosteroid which would lead to mooning of the face and other things or excess sex hormones that could have been the issue the other would have been enlargement of the adrenal gland because of infections per se and in those circumstances apart from the signs and symptoms of an overactive adrenal or an underactive adrenal there might be other non specific symptoms for example a discomfort in the abdomen pain dragging or you know a fullness after you've eaten something so those could be all varied presentations of an adrenal lesion now a very very small bit of that would actually be due to malignancy and even if it's due to malignancy it could be in most of the circumstances starting from one adrenal gland itself or rarely it could be spread of other cancers to the adrenal for example if you have lung cancer if you've got breast cancer a lot of them will have metastases to both the adrenal glands fortunately if you if it's detected relatively early on and investigated adequately and then surgically removed you tend to have a reasonable outcome but in most of the cases like i said because the initial presentation might be absolutely silent a lot of times we diagnose adrenal cancer in a relatively advanced stage when the outcome doesn't look that bright all right uh, thanks so much uh, for that doctor we'll slip into a short break and return with more questions uh, for our doctors who are telling us about the adrenal gland and maintaining our health
Welcome back. You're watching Health and Wellness, Myths versus Facts. I'm Gargi Rawat and we're talking about hormones and the adrenal glands. Let's go across to our panel of doctors who've been answering all our questions. And Dr. Jaktap, is there a blood test to check adrenal glands and which tests are required to know about adrenal problems? Right. So, um, there is no single blood test which can tell me about uh, the you know status of my adrenal gland. Uh, there are different uh, panel of tests and uh, say suppose for example clinically if your endocrinologist or doctor is suspecting a particular problem then they will advise the relevant tests. So for example uh, we might have uh, ask a patient to come to us in the morning empty stomach uh, at 8 am to give a blood sample. Sometimes uh, we tell them to do it in a particular position. So suppose uh, there is a test called uh, uh, for the you know adrenal medulla. Then I might tell the patient to lie down in a sleeping position for half an hour and then collect the blood for uh, the particular test. Sometimes we might tell the patient to you know walk about uh, for two hours and then collect the blood sample. Uh, there are some tests like ACTH stimulation test where you know we do it to diagnose adrenal insufficiency. So there what we do is we tell the patient uh, you know, to come to us and then we give them a ACTH hormone injection and then thereafter we collect their blood sample again after an hour. So there are different kinds of tests. What I just want to emphasize here is that not a single test, not one particular, no one particular test will help you to reach uh, to the correct diagnosis. It is a panel of different tests and don't go by the lab specific cutoff. Many a times we see that patients come to us already, uh, you know, the blood sample has been drawn. There are tests which are available where they may find that, you know, that particular level is out of the uh, lab uh, reference range. So it does not mean that you tend, you have that particular disorder. The doctor will interpret those results depending upon your clinical circumstances. So uh, discuss with your endocrinologist about the reports that you are worried about and then come to a proper conclusion. All right. Uh, Dr. Ramakrishnan, in addition to medical treatment, are there any lifestyle changes that could help manage the condition? Are there certain things that family uh, members, caregivers should be aware of for providing better care? So, uh, the lifestyle a person with adrenal insufficiency or adrenal excess uh, should adopt is a healthy lifestyle like everyone else. Uh, you know, uh, if they are overweight or obese, uh, try to get to a uh, better weight, a lower weight uh, through a healthy diet and exercise. That's number one. Smoking cessation is very important, especially for those who are having adrenal hyperfunction. So adrenal hyperfunction, despite uh, various therapies, remains under treated uh, for many years, actually. So uh, uh, one of the risks associated with adrenal hyperfunction is in fact uh, cardiovascular risk. So this yeah. can be prevented if uh, the patient stops smoking, you know, does regular exercise and follows a diet plan. Of course, uh, another important thing to note is the salt intake. The salt intake has to be according to what dysfunction that the patient is having. So for instance, if they have mineralocorticoid insufficiency, we encourage salt intake and the salt intake has to be little more than usual. And if a patient is having adrenal excess, uh, like a Cushing's or a mineralocorticoid excess, we would like the patient to take a little less salt, salt intake. So these are some of the advices that we give on a lifestyle basis for patients with adrenal insufficiency. All right, uh, Dr. Ghosh, how can uh, the adrenal gland affect the behavior of a person? Because this is something I guess many of, we, of our viewers must be uh, wondering. Is this change in uh, behavior transient? Right. Uh, we were talking about that the adrenal has got two parts. One is the inner medulla and the outer cortex. Now, the cortex produces the steroid hormones, that's the glucocorticoid hormones. Now, these are hormones which are related to our own body's response to stress. For example, if somebody is unwell, has got fever, got diarrhea, maybe even vomiting, these stress hormone levels go up so that the body can fight with that external stress. Now, if there is a deficiency of the same, the body will not be able to cope with it in, you know, will become lethargic, unable to cope. On the other hand, if you have long term stress and long term excess of glucocorticoid hormones, for example, in Cushing's, the individual is likely to suffer from depression, anxiety, 
and certain behavioral changes. That's one group of responses. Now, the inner medulla produces certain other neurohormones like adrenaline and noradrenaline. Now, if there is an excess of all of this, you will see that the individual is very fidgety, has got palpitation, has got excessive sweating, is might be irritable, the blood pressure might shoot up. So, so you can have a variety of behavioral changes depending on the kind of hormonal abnormality that you have with either it's the medulla or the cortex of the adrenal which gets affected. So all of these can be very, very subtle, but a good clinician should be able to pick it up. All right. Uh, and Dr. Uh, Jaktab, just to understand, uh, you know, the adrenaline, what causes an adrenaline uh, rush and why is it transient? Right. So uh, adrenaline rush is a response of our body. It's a normal response to any stressful stimulus. So as I was just you know earlier talking about, so if you are under, in under any stress, so for example, I am I have to go for a job interview. I am you know uh, in a physical harm. So suppose I am being um, uh, I'm running and I, you know, I, there's a dog who's running after me. So then, you know, this, this is a uh, physical stress for the body. And then adrenaline hormone actually comes into picture and helps us to deal with this stress. So this excess surge of the adrenaline hormone in our body, that is what we call as adrenaline rush. So adrenaline rush is perfectly normal. It can happen to any individual when the stressful situation arises and it is generally transient. So suppose whenever the whatever the uh, stimulus or the stressful stimulus was, it goes away, then the adrenaline hormones also come down to the normal range and then the body comes back to its usual state. So it is generally transient. But say suppose if I have a tumor sitting in my adrenal gland, which is constantly producing this excess amount of adrenal medullary hormones, then what happens is that my body can get into the symptoms of adrenaline rush without the appropriate stimulus. So I might be just sitting normally, you know, there's nothing uh, abnormal happening around me and still I might feel all the symptoms of adrenaline rush. So that is abnormal. And uh, sometimes it can happen in the presence of a tumor or sometimes it can happen to other conditions also like for example due to anxiety. So if it happens, adrenaline rush happens due to inappropriate stimuli or due to lack of any stimulus, then it's time to consult your doctor and understand the symptoms as to why they are happening. Right. Uh, Dr. Ramakrishnan, uh, you know, also many viewers must be wondering how do doctors then treat patients who have an adrenaline crisis? Uh, so adrenaline crisis is, uh, adrenal crisis is a word which we uh, specifically apply to people who have uh, both glucocorticoid and medullocorticoid insufficiency, which is severe and life-threatening. So, uh, so these patients, uh, uh, you know, will have uh, uh, severe weakness, a low blood pressure, may have a low blood glucose, and they will usually have a background history of, uh, of uh, having adrenal dysfunction. They may already be on replacement with uh, steroids, glucocorticoids or medullocorticoids or both. So, in such scenario, uh, these patients must be hospitalized, first of all, and uh, they need to be given IV fluids to expand their vascular volume so that their blood pressure comes back up to normal. And uh, they are also administered uh, glucocorticoids uh, parenterally because the orally given tablets may or may not get absorbed well and uh, it may take a longer time to act, actually. So, we need to show some more urgency. So we need to treat them with uh, IV glucocorticoids. And uh, there are usually trigger events which will trigger this kind of an adrenal crisis from happening, uh, like uh, an infection or uh, a, a heart attack or a stroke. Any of these things can actually trigger such an adrenal crisis. We need to handle the trigger event as well. We need to find out what triggered the adrenal crisis in the particular individual and then give treatment for that as well so that the patient gets better sooner. And uh, this is a very important uh, problem for those who have adrenal disorders. A good out of 100 patients with adrenal insufficiency, about 4 or 5 will get an adrenal uh, uh, crisis once a year at least. So that's what the statistics show. So it's a fairly common event. Uh, the relatives should be aware and uh, we counsel patients regarding this as well. All right, uh, doctor, thank you so much uh, for speaking to us and, you know, telling us about this issue, which is not very well known among uh, viewers and hopefully that helped many people listening out there. Thank you for joining us. Thank you all for watching at home. Goodbye. Thank you.
Thank you.